are at the Atlanta History Center doing the Veterans History Project. Today is April 27th, 19th, 2005. Yes. Excuse me. And I am Neil O'Brien Tozer, uh, and to, here to interview Mr. William C. Martin. Uh, Mr. Martin, would you give your name again and your date of birth and where you were born? Uh, my name is William C. Martin. I was, I'm 80 years old. I was born in 1924, July 6, 1924, in Drake, Kentucky. And I, from, I, when I was about seven years old, we moved to Portland, Tennessee, where I went through grade school and high school. And on, I, in December 42, I was registered for the draft. And then in February, I received a call, a draft call, and then this was delayed until graduation in June. On June 30th, I, I, I went to Camp Forest in Tullahoma, Tennessee, I by bus with about 30 or so others, and we went through the process, physical examinations, and so forth and so on. You were 18 years old then? I was 18 years old. This is June 43? Yeah. All right. Well, tell us about uh, the physical. Well, the physical. <laughs> I, 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 I almost didn't pass because I weighed only 107 pounds. My goodness. And I, I, the doctor said, I, I, I come back in six months or so. Uh, at all. But I argued with them and got in because I it was determined to get into the army. Yeah, you know, I at that time I I, I, I think that uh, this war I'd been an interventionist from 1940 on uh, uh, politically and I've been active. Even as a uh, very uh, very young man. Yes. So I the and I was determined to get into the army. So the physical examination, I suppose, was the most thorough physical examination I'd ever had up to that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than I, the matter of weight, I think that they probably thought I was 15 years old or something. I, that I, worried them, <laughs> I'm sure. Because there were a lot of people who were 15 or 16 were trying to get in. I see. How did you convince them, doctor? I just argued. <laughs> and finally they uh, gave up and uh, allowed me. That's an amazing story, it really is. You must have been very convincing. <laughs> and looked good, too. So, uh, you were classified 1A when you went in, then you had this physical, and you were in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Tullahoma, Camp Forest in Tullahoma, Tennessee. I, I can remember I, eating dinner there and deciding that I wasn't going to like the food in the army. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the food in the army was probably better than most people got during the 1930s. It was the Depression. Yes. And I, we never got such quantities of food, or probably as well prepared, as uh, the U.S. Army got during those years. Mm -hmm. So that part was good. So, the, um, so I never had any real problem with the food. Although lots of people griped all the time about the food, too much stew, whatever it is, sort of thing. I, I, uh, they, uh, I, I, in any case, we went to Fort, I, two, I had two weeks I, to return home. Then we went to, I, on, I think, uh, July 13th to, I camp, uh, to Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. Where is that? Is I, it, uh, it's uh, just south of uh, Chattanooga, I think. Oh, just a few miles north. Yeah, no. this is the northern part. No, I, uh, and Fort Oglethorpe was a processing center. I see. Where uh, GIs were uh, passed in and given their uniforms and everything, and then shipped to all parts of the United States. Right. No, I, I, and of course, there were lots of camps here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Oglethorpe also, I think, was very much involved in the early airborne operations oh. training. Oh. 
So, uh, but yeah. you specifically wanted the army. Yes, I specifically wanted the army. So I didn't want the navy. I knew that, and uh, I wanted to go to Europe. So I, uh, the, um, I had no desire to go to the Pacific. <laughs> What a way to go to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember in those days, people, most people never left their home counties or their home states. That's true. The travel simply wasn't a part of the uh, culture at that time. Mm -hmm. So that I, I, uh, the, I, I had been out of Tennessee, I think, once before mm -hmm. when I went up to, I, I Ohio to his relatives, and I, I'd never been anywhere else in, uh, except in Tennessee. So you wanted uh, to join the army and see the world. Uh, well, I, I, I'm not certain that that was such a top priority sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I I wanted in the army. Mm -hmm. Right. So the um, I and uh, I wanted to go to Europe because I was very much from I, I, my first political recollection was in 1933 when Hitler came to power in Germany. I, uh, the Louisville Courier Journal, which we got, had it all in pink. Uh, the front page was a special, extra, and so forth and so on, showing uh, the rise of Hitler in, uh, to power in Germany in 19, March 1933, or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I, I was politically conscious during the, that period of the 1930s. I, 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 and when I got to, by the time I got to high school, I, I was a very strong supporter of Franklin Roosevelt. And I, 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 during his campaign in 1940, I think that I, I, out of the 240 or so people in our high school, only about 15 supported uh, Wendell Wilkie. Hmm. So, uh, so you had, uh, like, so I was very much active in that Campaign. particular period. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, uh, in any case, I can remember uh, listening every night to the broadcast from London yeah. and the bombing and all. And yeah. I, I think if I ever prayed, I prayed every night that uh, England would survive. Amen. See, um, and uh, the, um, so. That was a frightening time. Yes. And also, I, during those years, I still went to church all the time, regularly, every Sunday, and the like, mm -hmm. as most people did. Yeah. And prayed for yeah. the Allies. Yeah. Roosevelt and Churchill. Yeah. The Great Ones. Yeah. So I, I was convinced that Roosevelt was the greatest president the United States had ever had. Mm -hmm. And uh, Churchill was a great hero. Mine too. And I, I, I followed the rise of General de Gaulle. Mm -hmm. So that I, I, I was very much uh, involved with World War II and thinking in World War II. And, all, and with the dangers we faced at the time. Because it wasn't until uh, 1942 or sometime, or even before 42, that we actually began winning in some places. Right. So, you know, uh, because Pearl Harbor had come in 41, mm -hmm. and then uh, the uh, losses of the Pacific mm -hmm. continuously, from the you know, Philippines and down to Indonesia and so yeah. forth. I, and then I, of course, uh, in Europe, I, I, uh, up until Africa. the time of uh, Stalingrad, I, in, I was at 43, I think it was, mm -hmm. it was February of 43, I believe. I, I, uh, the battle was going in, in favor of the Axis mm -hmm. in every theater. D-Day wasn't until 44. No. No, it was June. June uh, 6, 44. Uh, 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 VE Day was May 8, uh, 1945. Uh -huh. uh, D Day uh, was June 6, if I remember correctly. 44. Uh, yeah, 44. Uh -huh. so 
do you remember where you were on Pearl Harbor Day? On Pearl Harbor Day, yes, I remember it quite well. I was in Portland, Tennessee. I came in from outside, and on the radio at around one o'clock or so in the afternoon, I, I the broadcast came over the radio that Pearl Harbor was being bombed. It's so, I, so that uh, I can still remember that. I, I should think so. I mean, because you have such strong memories of, yes. of all that, that I would think it's always interesting to know where people were. Yeah, that was one of the times that uh, I strongly remember where it was. Yeah. Well, after um, Fort Oglethorpe and you were issued uniforms and indoctrination. Yeah, the uh, films, they had indoctrination films and so forth. There were a series of foreign po of our indoctrination films, about seven or so, which were shown in the Army at that time. I'm not certain whether I saw all of them at Oglethorpe, I, uh, but it's possible that I did. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I, the, uh, I, we got on a train I, and crossed Tennessee through Memphis and then into Arkansas, down to Texarkana. I, on our way to uh, I, North Camp Hood uh, uh, near Waco, Texas, which was uh, North Camp Hood was just simply army barracks which had been placed out in the desert really at that time and I think we were among the first to come into them and it was a tank destroyer camp the tank destroyers I uh, were I, I essentially I uh, half tracks with carrying a 75 millimeter howitzer at that time the uh, I and uh, The camp was very strongly uh, tank destroyer, but I came in I, uh, and I was assigned to um, the 142nd Army Specialized Training Battalion. I, the, Did you um, have any choice, any say-so in what part of the Army you were going to or were you just placed? I, well, I took tests. Uh, you, you, you had the various tests that the Army gave. And I made high enough to get into the Army Specialized Training Program, which at that time was aimed at producing, within two years, I, I, basic engineers, people who were trained in basic engineering. College, it was college training, mm -hmm. but it was speeded up to about double the rate in, uh, uh, in normal colleges. They were pushing you. So they were pushing at that time. And I... Uh, we were segregated into Army Specialized Training Battalions where we got 13 weeks basic t training in the infantry skills, mm -hmm. which included all sorts of things like battle uh, courses and uh, combat courses uh, and so forth and so on. Uh, I, I, night uh, training and the like, uh, training with bazookas, training with uh, 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 rifles, machine guns, I, I, 45 caliber pistols, and the like. So that the, at that time, they were shortening the basic training in much of the Army to eight weeks instead of 13 weeks. Wow. I, in order to get people to, uh, uh, to speed up the, uh, but uh, we went through 13 weeks uh, basic training. During that time, I became ill with gastroenteritis and had to go to the army, the camp hospital, mm -hmm. uh, where they gave me all kinds of uh, new antibiotics. Uh, which had just uh, been invented. Which had just been invented, yes. I, 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 and I, I was in there for several weeks, uh, so I had to make up that at the time when I got back to uh, my unit. I see. The, uh, I, I think what happened was that I went into Waco, Texas on a three-day pass mm -hmm. and became ill. I, 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 and I, uh, after a few days I wanted out of the hospital, but they wouldn't let me out for some reason. I think at that time they were still holding people for you know, seven weeks if you've had uh, pneumonia or something like that. I, a tremendous uh, periods of time in the army, the base hospitals. Mm -hmm. 
So, but I, the, uh, I wanted to get back to my outfit before, because I knew there was, uh, training was coming to an end, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to get left behind. Mm -hmm. So. So you uh, got back to Camp Hood from the hospital. Yes, I got back to Camp Hood, and I went through about a, a week of speeded up uh, training. I, and then I was sent to Texas A&M College at Texas Station, uh, College Station, Texas. Mm -hmm. I took I to the Army Special to an Army Specialized Training a holding station there, waiting to be sent to somewhere else in the United States to go to college. So I was think I was there I, for about four weeks or so. I, I the the weather was bad. I can remember marching on ice. And so forth and so on. Uh, as we uh, everywhere we went for a breast, and uh, there was some hostility between the uh, Texas Aggies and the GIs on the campus, I, um, because we were getting special treatment and uh, so forth. But I, uh, the, um, I, I, uh, around uh, the first of January. Um, uh, in the December, I was sent to uh, Urbana-Champaign, Illinois, to the University of Illinois. Mm -hmm. And I uh, joined a, an Army Specialized Training Battalion there. I, uh, essentially, we were taking college courses about... Uh, uh, I, I aimed at finishing, a, in two years, a full... Uh, I, uh, 18 months or so, I, 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 a Bachelor of Science degree in engineering. And I, the, I, 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 this came to an end in I, February I, when they had the choice of drafting fathers with three children or getting rid of the Army Specialized Training Program. So about 100,000 people in the Army Specialized Training Program were sent uh, into combat divisions as replacements. I, they, um, I, 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 in the beginning of March, I, we were in, landed in Louisiana, taken by train in, in us to the swamps of Louisiana, dumped out uh, in the swamps, given a shelter half and a blanket and told to pitch our tents because there was where we were and we were there in the swamps for the next uh, a, a couple of uh, three months Good uh, because we joined the 8th Armored Division on maneuvers. All right. yeah, I, I'm not certain how many hundred, I, uh, I think maybe 800 of us or so I, 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 and we were all assigned to units. And I was assigned there to the 405th Armored Field Artillery Battalion, although I had no field artillery training. And so here I you had were infantry training. So removed from infantry, removed from the engineering yeah. that you've been studying. Yeah, we were taken out of college, college dorms with sheets and everything, and put in a swamp with a a, a shelter half and a. a Blanket. What an awful change! Uh, in the in the winter, awful. it was cold and raining and so forth. So, I, I and then there were two or three days there in which we were assigned I, to various units in the Eighth Armored Division. I, I Eighth Armored Division was on uh, maneuvers until June, about the middle of June. This is by this time 44. We had lost 32 people killed on maneuvers. No. I, I, uh, by June. On maneuvers? Yes, our, our maneuvers, yeah. That's. So. Those are supposed to be just practice. Yes, they? yes. They are. I, was it the weather or was it? I have I, uh, accidents of various kinds. And probably some uh, explosions or whatever, but the um, I, uh, I, uh, thirty-two people died on those uh, three months maneuvers. That's a lot of people. I, 
Like the, and of course, in maneuvers all across the United States, this sort of thing was happening. Mm -hmm. I the, um, just don't often think about it. Huh? I just don't often think about it. The, um, no, I, one doesn't really think of the cost of maneuvers. The, um, I, the, I, June 15th, when we moved into, uh, I, 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 South Camp Polk, Louisiana, mm -hmm. I, I, they, um, they had a ceremony here commemorating the 32 people who died. Good. The, um, so, I, then the rest of the summer we were engaged in I, post maneuvers uh, training and uh, getting ready to go overseas actually because we knew that the division was going to be assigned overseas. And in fact, we wanted it to be assigned. Everyone wanted it to be assigned much closer, sooner. Mm -hmm. I, but the, I, I, there were a number of times in there which I, I think just as we were leaving I, the maneuvers, there was a big ex explosion, an ammunition depot exploded. I, 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 and then uh, toward the end of summer. Down there in Louisiana. Yeah. I, and uh, there were, at the end of summer, I, I, uh, some other kind of explosion, which I, I, I and the, and the division sent in its resources. It may have been a forest fire or whatever. I, I'm not certain at the time. I can't remember that well. I wasn't in the group which went to it, so I, during the, we were, in any case, we were in, for about three months we were there in South Camp Polk, and I went on passes to De Ritter, Louisiana, and to Shreveport, and I had a couple of three-day passes into New Orleans, which was the first time I was there, mm -hmm. and I went to Antoine's to eat and places like that at that time. I, I, but uh, I, uh, and I, sometime in the, it must have been around uh, June or July, I had, I got a, a pass to go home, I think for 10 days. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, because of furloughs I were, were being given out. I, uh, supposedly after six months you got one, but I, very seldom did people get them. Mm -hmm. I, uh, after the war, they gave you a terminal leave pay for uh, to cover the like the furloughs you didn't you get. Yes. <laughs> they uh, in any case. I I in about September we were placed on prior given priority for shipment overseas, and we began. A, all the processing of records and the like, and a, a equipment and so forth and so on. I, I, I had to I get ready to I leave Camp Polk and go to the port of embarkation. I, I, during which time we sent home everything we could. And some people chopped up bazookas in three parts and tried to send them to them. <laughs> they found all kinds of, the story is that and someone disassembled a jeep and tried to. Through <laughs> uh, the mail. But, uh, <laughs> but in any case, I, I, just before we left, about one out of every three GIs had was being uh, required to was being fined. They were finding them three times the value of the equipment they found <laughs> being shipped out. Of the <laughs> Pretty they expensive. Have, I, I sent myself through Railway Express a day or two before they started checking day, uh, Railway Express, mainly extra pieces of uniform and things like that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 the uh, stuff which I, I didn't want to throw away, mm -hmm. but which was it was illegal to send out. You were lucky you weren't caught, uh, uh, including some rocket grenades. Oh. <laughs> well, they were they were dummy grenades. Okay. And they had been fired, mm -hmm. but still, I, I, they, uh, uh, it was totally against the law to do. 
not only that, uh, would have been some sort of kind of a court martial. They weren't going to do anything to you except fine you because you were going overseas. They needed you to go overseas. Yeah, you know, but the, uh, literally the, the entire division uh, was swept through this uh, process. Mm -hmm. I, and of course, and, uh, some of them had been with the division for from 1942 I, uh, until the time, and they had accumulated tremendous amounts of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I, so in they were October, in, home. in October, we received commands I, I, to get ready to, I, to leave. And I, toward the end of October, we uh, got on troop trains. I, I to go to uh, the port of embarkation, I, which we found out later was Camp Kilmer, New Jersey, the uh, the camp we would be bivouacked in before we went on board ships, and we would leave from New York Harbor. Uh, the um, on a I, convoy, probably. What's that? On a convoy. Yeah, convoy. there were four uh, transport uh, ships in uh, carrying the division overseas. And once during the trip, they, uh, there were you know, thunder of, of explosions and so forth. And uh, the, because it was thought that the, we were being attacked by submarines, and they dropped uh, depth charges and so forth. But uh, evidently it was a false alarm. In any case, I, uh, I, we, I left. Uh, I, I, I think it was November 7th we left. Um, I, I, uh, New York Harbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was around um, uh, 10 or 11 days later that we got to uh, England. Mm -hmm. And we landed at, uh, we were disembarked in Southampton and at Plymouth. I, uh, my uh, battalion went ashore at Plymouth. I see. How many were in the whole division of that? I, about 10,500 in, the, uh, in the division proper. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you had supplemental groups, some of which didn't come until later. Mm -hmm. Because a, a division, we, the armored division I had about, if I remember correctly, three tank battalions, three armored field artillery, three armored infantry battalions, and then uh, quartermaster and uh, various uh, support services. Mm -hmm. So that I, I, the division itself, I had uh, about 10,000 uh, proper. Mm -hmm. I, in combat, we would always have maybe 5,000 or so more attached to us from other battle groups and so forth and so on. But uh, uh, someone said that if you, if we had the division vehicles lined up, I uh, uh, sixty feet between or whatever it was, it would be a sixty-mile column. Wow. We had much more uh, uh, mechanized equipment than the German divisions, even the Panzer divisions, because they had, were using horses uh, until the end of the war in many of their divisions. I didn't realize. The, um, so the, uh, but uh, uh, the tanks we had were the old M6s with uh, medium tanks, uh, 30 ton tanks with 75 millimeter howitzers on them, uh, 75 millimeter rifles on them. Mm -hmm. I, I, and those would bounce off a Tiger tank. Mm. I, the, I was in a, an M7 self-propelled, I, 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 105 millimeter howitzer. I, we had about 18 of those to a battalion. Of the howitzers? Yes. I, 105 millimeter howitzer self-propelled. They were on medium tank chassis. Oh. I, and we had about... Uh, six or seven in a crew on them, one for aircraft, uh, 50 millimeter aircraft gun, and then uh, for the 
the driver and then I, for about five or so of us, to handle the uh, howitzer. In any case, we went, we landed at uh, Plymouth, and uh, they were taken by train to um, I, I, uh, the Salisbury Plains to I, uh, I, uh, Tidworth, and we. I, uh, I, uh, I were, uh, there were barracks, ar British Army barracks and so forth and so on. And, but, also, but most of us went out in pyramidal tents for eight people to a tent uh, on Windmill Hill. As far as you could see, you could see these pyramidal tents and you could see a sea of mud because it was mud everywhere. They, uh, I, uh, this is so, on the Salisbury Plain. Yes. Yeah, th this was, uh, must have been, uh, I, I don't know, 25 miles or more mm -hmm. or so from uh, Salisbury. Maybe more, I can't uh, gauge the speed very, distances very well mm -hmm. now. I, the, uh, in any case, we were, I uh, was right near Stonehenge. Mm -hmm. How long were you there, approximately? We were there. I, we got there uh, about uh, the middle of November. I uh, see. We got to England on. Uh, it must have been around uh, the twentieth or so. I I, I, have, I put, tried to put down the dates in That's there. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Uh, uh, I. Uh, but we were there until after Christmas, and uh, on. Then came uh, on December 16th the Battle of the Bulge, yeah. the Ardennes against the Vineyard, which hit a, a, against a, a, an American infantry division, which had over a thousand Army Specialized Training pro, uh, replacements in it, with no military training at all, you know, 18 year olds or so, just taken from college campuses. I the um, I, so the, the Germans pushed through and were I, I allegedly pushing to Amsterdam or to Paris. I, and I, for, I, 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 I were brought to a halt at Bastogne. I, they, um, then came, we received a notice, I think on January 1st or, or so, I, that we were going to I go to the Ardennes. We, I, by the 7th of January, we were in France. We landed at Le Havre and at Rouen. My outfit went ashore at Rouen, and, and I can remember spending a night there, sleeping in a barn. I, I, I and then we crossed, I, from uh, there, I, northern France, I, to Reims. I, I, in a blinding snowstorm, I, in a very cold weather that winter, it was the coldest weather in a number of years, I, I, and I, at Reims we received, I, I, we began receiving some of the equipment. We, we didn't have all of our equipment, I, and we didn't have ammunition, we had only about 10 or 11 percent of the ammunition that we needed. <laughs> I, uh, then we received uh, I, to orders to go to Panamusan, I, uh, 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 in eastern France, I, uh, 170 miles. And I, we went on our columns and the sh tanks were slipping off the highways and everything like that, literally scarring every tree along that 170 mile uh, route. We finally got to uh, Panamusan, and there we I, uh, I, uh, encamped, yeah. and they began bringing up ammunition and uh, extra vehicles and things like that. Supplies. The things which I, uh, were necessary. Mm -hmm. I, 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 and from there, I, uh, I'm not certain how long, I can't remember how many days. I stayed at a farmhouse, or rather a barn, near Port Circe, which was outside Pont And one day, the bridge out in front of our, a, a 
Martin on, over a stream there blew up. It had been mined by the Germans, and they hadn't found the mines. So that uh, it, uh, it could have killed everyone in that group at the time. I, uh, it's a the, it was, it say. just went off in the middle yeah. of the afternoon. I, I the uh, showering rocks over everything. The um, but no uh, one died. No, not that I know of. Amazing. I don't think anyone was hurt, injured by it. I, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm certain that no one in biopsy was in, injured by it. Then I, I, we went from Panama's on, we began to move toward the, to join in the battle. Uh, I, you know, the balls, uh, well, under Patton's Army, we were in Patton's Army from the time we left, uh, arrived in France until we, I, uh, Part of well, well, I think technically we were in a 15th army, which didn't exist, <laughs> uh, which was simply a, a, a on paper. On paper. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, um, we joined the Patton's army uh, after, uh, around Parmesan and moved into combat. I, I, and then I, after Around the beginning of February, I received, uh, or after, uh, or sometime in February, we received uh, word that we were to go up and join the Ninth Army of General Simpson, along with the British Second Army in the Netherlands. So we took, made a 300-mile trip from I uh, I to I I I. Uh, up to near Maastricht, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. uh, 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 on the Roar River. The Roar was the German lines were on one side, Germans were on one side of the Roar and the other side. But the problem was the land, because it was all marshes and all, and it, it couldn't take uh, vehicles. Mm -hmm. So we had to wait for the weather to uh, change. So uh, we were, I. Uh, at least a couple of weeks or so in that particular position. I, I, I am under German fire most of the time. Or in occasion, their planes would go over and strafe and so forth. But I, the, I, then, I think it was in March, I, I, we, I, 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 launched an offensive over the roar, in which you had uh, artillery all up and down the roar. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, the 405th Armored Field Artillery was just part of the batteries there. I, uh, a tremendous barrage over the roar. I, I, we crossed on pontoon bridges across the roar and uh, began moving across the Rhineland, the Battle of the Rhine. We were, I, uh, the, uh, it was heavy fighting through most of that area mm -hmm. because this was a, a fortified area. I, not as bad as some of the earlier part in the winter around Baird where we had been, where I, the, uh, which was on the Siegfried Line. Yeah. The, uh, but in any case, we crossed the uh, Roar and went to the Rhine and it must have been the end of March or the beginning of April that we uh, prepared to cross the Rhine. Earlier, the earlier down at Remagen Bridge, I, 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 an American division had already crossed. But I, this entire northern part uh, was a highly defended area outside the Ruhr uh, industrial area. And uh, the uh, I, we had I, there was a, the night we crossed the Rhine. I there was an artillery barrage. I uh, some twenty six thousand uh, rounds of ammunition fired. I, I over a thousand artillery pieces being used. In this, 
and we crossed on a pontoon bridge uh, the Rhine at that time. And then I, uh, I began the march uh, across central Germany, which I, I the, uh, uh, throughout that area, uh, was a lot of confusion. We were moving rapidly in all sorts of directions, both north and south along the Rhine and across I, I, the, the, the Ruhr, I, uh, fighting uh, uh, in lots of places be, uh, d defended, sometimes by, only by small units, sometimes by substantial units. But uh, in any case, uh, I, the, uh, eventually, toward the end of the war, toward, I, uh, Toward, I, I, in the middle of April or so, we were assigned to go to the Harris Mountains. The Harris Mountain area was a heavily fortified area I, in I, central Germany. And last fighting in the war took place there. In the Harris Mountains. In the Harris Mountains. And in fact, the uh, German commander of the Harris Mountain uh, units surrendered to um, a, the battalion chief of, uh, I think, our 36 tank battalions. But uh, we, I, we, uh, I'm not certain whether any of our units reached the Elba. Yeah. But, uh, but the Harris Mountain area, they thought there would be guerrilla activity and all sorts of things like that, which didn't material. It was some, but not much. Not as much as they was that, no. Did you suffer many casualties in the balls of Albert? Uh, the, um, I, I've never seen the figures on the casualties, but I think that about one out of four members of our division were injured or killed. That's a lot. Yeah. I, I, uh, so. I, then, after I, the, uh, I can remember when we got word that uh, uh, armistice had taken place on May 8th. I was, uh, I, we were holding, guarding a railroad yard uh, in uh, uh, the Harris Mountain area. And uh, they, and after that, I, uh, uh, they began reinforcing, saluting, and all sorts of things, uh, uh, which uh, uh, disappeared uh, during the, uh, the Valos period. I, from there, we went to Göttingen. I, I, where What's that near that I might know? Uh, uh, well, this was in the British sector. Okay. The British sector. I, 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 because when we moved out, we were replaced by British occupied. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they, I, we turned it over this entire area to over to the British. Okay. So it was in uh, north central Germany. Okay. I, I, we stayed in Göttingen for a few weeks, and then I, I stayed in apartment houses. We built like. In, uh, apartment houses in the city. And then we received orders to go to uh, Czechoslovakia. So, I, you know, this again was about a 300 mile motor march across, I, I, along the, the Autobahn down to Austria and then around uh, uh, less good roads into Czechoslovakia, where uh, I, the uh, headquarters was located, the division was located in Pilsen, mm -hmm. uh, an industrial city, but also famous for its beers. Right, I was just going to say the beer. I, and I, I was um, uh, uh, garrisoned with a family in, uh, near the uh, village of Klatovy. I, I am just a few miles down the road where the Russian army.
uh, and there were some contacts with, with drinking parties and so forth. And with the mainly, Russians? Uh, with the Russians, yes. Mainly officers from our unit. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, I, I, the, uh, we stayed there. I, I, I'm not certain how long it was. Sometime, I think in August, uh, we began to disband the division. I, I, get, uh, I, 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 and I want to I prepare to, to say, I prepare to go to uh, the Pacific. So, uh, so I, the general of the division, John Devine, was promoted from I bring their general to major general there wow. in Pilsen. And uh, if I remember correctly, around September, I, I, uh, some of us were reassigned to the 58th Armored Field Artillery Battalion mm -hmm. I, near Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. And I, I as army, part of the Army of Occupation. I, I, but the 58th was put together by members of Kama to go to the Pacific. Uh, everything then was uh, getting ready to, uh, I, I, when the war came to the end in August, I, that meant that uh, these units didn't go. And where uh, were you assigned? To this? Uh, well, I was, a, I was a, near Stuttgart. So you were assigned uh, to stay the, in Germany? I, we, we were supposed to stay in Germany at least well, you, they were beginning to uh, d discharge soldiers according to a point system. Okay. How many points you had? Uh, yeah. Well, I had 51 points, mm -hmm. which would have meant that I would have been there for a long, long time. Oh. But I, 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 but I, the, uh, we were in occupation near Stuttgart, and I, I, this, uh, for a while, we, uh, I, I was a, guard at a castle, I think called Brandenburg, where they had all the records of the German rocket experiments. Good heavens. The Navy and the Army were jointly guarding it. And then one day the Navy pulled in and took out everything, and Patton uh, blew his uh, stack over that. His famous temple. Uh, yeah. I, the, um, because uh, the army, both were trying, as, as a matter here, of uh, importance to keep control of that. Mm -hmm. I, I also, I, we began to get you know, passes to go into town and things like that. I remember the, I, I, there must not have been much opposition and uh, much danger, although there was some. I, I, because I, I used to hitchhike. Uh, you to places like Rosenberg, I, yeah, I, then we, I, I received a, a seven-day pass to go to London. To London is for seven days, go to London for us, pass us for seven days, and return on completion of this. It was open-ended, because they couldn't say when I would get to London, and I couldn't say when I would get back. So along the way to London, I was in Paris. Wonderful. I, I, and I, I, then I, I, I went to Etretat, France, which was a vacation resort back before the war, and stayed there for about five days before I could get a transport to take me to England. In England, I stayed for seven days in London, and then returned uh, I, I, I to Etretat and back into Paris where I stayed for another three days. And then, I, and no one knew where the, the army units were at that time because they were being moved around. So finally uh, I was sent back to my uh, army outfit in Germany. After I got back, I, I just on chance, I applied to go to an army technical school mm -hmm. in England, not thinking anything about it. You weren't going to lose anything if you didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And I ended up I, 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 
getting an assignment to a 10-week Army Technical School near Reading, England. Good. And I, sometime in October or November, I went to, I, 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 England to the Army Technical School, which was all disorganized and so forth and so on, I, because it also was being disposed of. I, from there, I, in February, they decided that any GIs in England with 51 points, with over 50 points, would not be sent back to the continent, but would be sent directly back to the United States. Good. So that uh, I, I, arrived back, I arrived back in the United States, I think, on February 24th. 45. Yeah, no. 46. 46. Yeah. And I then came back to, I came, I took a train to Fort Camp Atterbury, Indiana, where I was discharged on February 26, 1946 and went home by train to Portland, Tennessee, and carried my double flag home from the railway station. Bless your heart. Uh, so, Bless your heart. Because I hadn't told anyone I was coming. You did. No. Then, uh, That's quite a tale. Did that, you ever come close to being wounded? Uh, obviously, several times you were in risky situations. I, but I, was, I didn't remember really getting really scared until after the fighting was over. Oh. And I realized that I could have gotten killed. Mm -hmm. I remember once I, when there were you know, German rocket grenades hitting all around me. And I, I had refused to get into a foxhole. I ran immediately and got in a foxhole. <laughs> I, 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 but... Uh, and I remember times when German officers were walking around through our camps mm -hmm. I, because uh, the uh, Germans who had, uh, the army had uh, broken up, the uh, units broken up, and they weren't taken prisoners. I, so they were going around. Walking. So I, there, I remember something about the towns we were through, Gelsenkirchen. I remember going to Gestapo headquarters there. A friend of mine grabbed a Luger pistol, and I grabbed a submachine gun, a machine, uh, an MP38, I, uh, I 750 round per minute machine gun, and took back with me. <laughs> but I, I, I you didn't were, try to mail it this time. Uh, I did mail it home. Oh, you did mail it home. I mailed two home. Oh my goodness. I, and they were totally against the law. I, I, and in the state of I, Massachusetts, to have them was a penalty punishable up to life imprisonment to, to get those. You know. So Did you I, know I, that? I, I knew they were against the law. I knew that they were not supposed to have been mailed. But uh, you, got, uh, you, uh, you took your box in, you got a signature of an officer on it, and you put it in the mail. And no one ever opened it. Praise be. Uh, they, uh, the only thing they wouldn't let you send was pistols and cameras. But cameras for some reason, I suppose because people were losing cameras. I, they, but I, uh, then when we came back, I, came, I had a Luger pistol I brought into the United States with me. I, I also mailed home a, a German army rifle, German helmet, gas mask, I, some things like that, which they were everywhere. Everyone was sending them back as souvenirs. So, I, I, the, I have them at home. They're uh, junk up in the attic, and I haven't looked at them in years and years and years. <laughs> Not since we put them in the attic. Lots of goodies. Uh, and, uh, but it was a question, you know, souvenirs and things you picked up like that. I, and there were very few controls on what was sent in. And there was no way because you had millions of people mailing things back. Mm -hmm. they, um, I, a few things they restricted. Cameras, for example, uh, oddly enough. I sent home a, 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 
bomb site from an airplane. I, I, because I, because I, it was a good as for binoculars looking mm -hmm. through it, to bring things up close. I, I, but I, there were people who sent home things like German jeeps. How? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they got them back. You couldn't exactly take it on the boat with you. <laughs> no, no, uh, but uh, going back, I joined the Army Reserve, uh, organized Army Reserve and stayed when in When you were mustered out. Yeah. Uh, you were discharged I, and mustered out. I, and uh, because you could get retirement points if you stayed in then and went to, to training occasionally and so forth. The, um, and then I, I, I got out of the Army Reserve in 1950. Let's see. Because when I and I joined I, I, the Air Force Reserve, organized Air Force Reserve, because a friend of mine, a professor at George at Vanderbilt, mm -hmm. wanted to start an air transport uh, battalion. So I joined it at that time, and. Uh, in June of 1953, uh, that enlistment came to an end, and I didn't sign up after that because I was working on a PhD. And all. So your career ended with the Air Force. Yeah. Yeah. In '53. Uh, that was from '50 to '53. As a matter of fact, I think that was during the uh, Korean War, mm -hmm. and I. Uh, most of the unit I was in got sent to Korea. I don't suppose, I suppose the reason I wasn't was because I was really not trained for the Air Force. I was trained uh, in the Army. I was an infantryman and an artilleryman. You were fortunate. Yeah, I was fortunate. I didn't get killed. <laughs> well, you have quite a fascinating story. You really do. It's just fascinating. We are very grateful to you for coming here and sharing it with us. And it will be sent to the Library of Congress and be on tape. They will have a tape here. We send one to you and one goes to the Library of Congress for this uh, project. And also it will be transcribed, so the hard copy uh -huh. will be around forever. Okay. And uh, it, it's very important to get this history down. And we are just so grateful to you, Mr. Martin, for coming and sharing it with us. Well, I was happy to do so. I actually didn't talk about anything about uh, World War II until 19, about four or five years ago, when I went to Omaha Beach in France. Mm -hmm. Up until that time, I never mentioned it, never talked about Why it. Why not? Uh, no it. reason that I know of. I, 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 I uh, I suppose I was simply so, so much engaged in other things, uh, and I, the, um, I became. Well, you can take all of these. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. The, um, I. In any case. Do you think the memories were too hard, to? No, I, I'm not certain. I'm not really certain. I, I, the, when I came out of the army, I went into college, and uh, then into graduate school. And I, although I maintained uh, I, the organized reserve uh, sort of connection, I, I, it wasn't so much a matter of talking about anything with regard to it. I, the. I, I, it was just a, a real part of life at that time. So it, it was not. It was not a part of, uh, of my everyday life. I, so, and I, I suppose that as you get older, you become more willing to talk about things. Uh, exactly. that, uh, well, you were a big part of history in that war. I mean, you were where history was being made. Yes, I know. 
Uh, yeah, so I think it's important that you talk about it. And we're honored that you came here to talk about well, it. Well, I was happy to do this. I, I, I'm not certain that I would have thought it important to do it 10 years ago or so. They, um, I, I, but I, as I said, was, when I went to Omaha Beach and all, and I went back to some of the areas in France that I began to remember and to think about it again. So That's inevitable. Were you there for the 50th anniversary? No, no, I didn't go there. The 50th anniversary, that would have been 1995. Yes. I, so... No, I didn't go. I don't think I was in Europe that year. The, uh, it was a couple of years later that I went to Omaha Beach. I see. So I wanted to go last year for the 60th, but I couldn't get there. I, I didn't get the, to the 60th anniversary either. The, um, the question, I can't travel very much. I, uh, my age is such. I have to have someone with me. So that uh, it's, uh, my feet give out, and uh, occasionally I, I t I'm under insulin. I see. And uh, I just pass out. Mm -hmm. no, so, uh, the, uh, and uh, for a while when I went to conventions and things, it happened to almost every convention. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would have an unconscious episode and they'd call 911 or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, uh, uh, I hope uh, I was hoping this summer to go back to Europe. I I had to go to France and to possibly go to Omaha Beach again. And uh, what I'd like to do is drive to some of these areas across northern France and over to uh, Belgium. And so if that's come to an end, yeah. I, but that, this is still going. Okay. So that's okay. Uh, I was uh, hoping that uh, to. Go to some places in France, uh, in, uh, away from the city. Uh, the, uh, most of the times when I've been to France, it's been in cities. I, and in France, up until the 